All right, welcome everybody. Today we're going to talk about special right triangles in this video. All right, there are two types of special right triangles. The first one is known as a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. And that's a reference to the size of the angles that are in there. And it's also known as an isosceles right triangle. And it's isosceles because in an isosceles triangle, two angles are equal to each other. Okay? So if a triangle has two angles that are equal, then two sides are also equal. The sides that are opposite the angles are the ang sides that are equal to each other. This one here is known as a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Okay? Now here's what we need to know. On an isosceles right triangle, this side and this side are the same. If I know that relationship, then I can solve for any of the sides of the triangle as long as I can do the Pythagorean theorem. 30, 60, 90 right triangle, what I need to know is that the shortest side, remember the shortest side is across from the smallest angle, so if the smallest angle is 30, okay, the shortest side is half as long as the longest side, and the longest side is our hypotenuse, so that would make our hypotenuse 2x. So if this is x, this would be 2x, twice as big as whatever this one is. All right, so let's try a couple problems. You need to have a piece of paper and a pencil and a calculator. Take notes, solve these problems. You'll be able to do all of our assigned problems. Great. Okay, so let's try to focus on the 45, 45, 90 right triangle for a bunch of these. All right, so if I, if I make up a number here and I say this is 8, can you find the other sides on this triangle? All right, so here's what you have to do. All right, well, it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. I know that this side here and this side here are the same. So that's 8. I'm going to circle this because that's where we started. That's 8. That's 8. Now I can just go do the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now this is where a calculator comes in handy. All right. 64 plus 64 equals c squared. c squared equals 128. Okay, c is equal to the square root of 128. We're not going to do decimals here. So remember, you have two choices. You can go do your factor tree. Okay, do your factor tree and just keep breaking this down. Or you can do the other method we learned when you're looking at your table of perfect squares, you know that this is the square root of 64 times the square root of 2. The square root of 64 is 8, so it's 8 root 2. So this is 8, this side's 8, this side en ends up being 8 root 2. All right, let's try it again. Let's pick another number here. Throw on 6. Okay, I'm going to circle this. Find the other two sides. All right. Okay. Well, if this is six, this one down here is six. Now I got to find this. I know two sides of a right triangle. I'm looking for the third, so I just drop down and put it into Pythagorean theorem. Six squared plus six squared equals c squared. Thirty-six plus thirty-six is equal to c squared. C equals the square root of seventy-two. Okay, then I have to go look at my table again. Look at our chart. For the biggest perfect square that goes into 72, it's 36. Two times. Square root of 36 is 6. Square root of 2 is, leave it as a square root of 2. So this is 6 times the square root of 2. Let's try another one. How about if I start you here and say this is 8. Okay, well, now I need to know that this and this are the same. Okay, so I am still going to do everything I do. I'm going to do the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so x squared plus x squared equals 8 squared. x squared plus x squared is 2x squared. 8 squared is 64. 
divide both sides by 2. x is equal to the square root of 32. Okay, square root of 32 is not a perfect square. So I go back and I look at my chart for the biggest perfect square that goes into 32. And that's square root of 16. 2 times. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 2 stays like that. So it's 4 root 2. Now a lot of people will recognize a pattern, and that's fine if you recognize the pattern. But it all boils down to the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, let's throw another number on here. Uh, doesn't matter, I'm just going to go with 14. So 14 starts here. This is x, this is x. Okay, see if you can fill this in. Hit pause right here. See if you can finish it up. Okay. 14 squared is 196. x squared equals divide by 2, 98. x equals the square root of 98. Not a perfect square. So I look in my chart for the biggest perfect square that goes into 98. That's 49 times 2. x equals 7 root 2. So this is 7 root 2 and 7 root 2. 3 root 2. And I said, hey, can you find the other two sides of this triangle? Sure. If this is 3 root 2, then this one automatically here is 3 root 2. Now I want to find this. So I go a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. 3 root 2 squared plus 3 root 2 squared equals c squared. Remember, 3 root 2 squared is 3 root 2 times 3 root 2. Previous video, we said you take the outsides, you group them together, you take the insides, group them together. This is 9 root 4, 9 times 2, which is 18. So this is 18 plus 18 equals c squared. c squared equals 36. c is equal to oops, square root of 36, so c is equal to 6. Okay. Okay, let's try another one. Let's say this is 10 root 2. I know this is a 45, 45, 90, so this is x and x. So I'm going to plug it into the Pythagorean Theorem. So I get x squared plus x squared equals 10 root 2 squared. So this is 2x squared. Remember, 10 root 2 times 10 root 2. OK, hit pause, see if you can come up with an answer. I'm going to group the outsides. Group the insides, multiply the outside by outside, inside by inside. That's a perfect square, so this is going to be 200. Divide both sides by 2. Take the square root of both sides. 100 is a perfect square. It's in my chart that we had the other day x is equal to 10. So both of these sides are 10. Okay, let's try something a little bit different. 5 root 6. Find the missing sides of our triangle. Okay, well if this is 5 root 6, I know this one here has also got to be 5 root 6 because it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So we're going to plug this into the Pythagorean Theorem. 5 root 6 squared plus 5 root 6 squared equals the hypotenuse squared. So you have to come over here and do the same steps we did on the previous problems and tell me what 5 root 6 squared is. All right, ready, go. All right, now that you're back, 5 root 6 squared is 150. 
So this is 150 plus 150 equals c squared. It becomes very mechanical. You just keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. 150 plus 150 is 300. Take the square root of both sides. Okay, square root of 300 is not a whole number, so we either do our factor tree or we go in and look at our chart of the biggest perfect squares. Biggest perfect square that goes into 300 evenly is 100. How many times? Three times. Square root of 100 is 10. Square root of 3 stays as 3. So let's try the 30, 60, 90 triangle. Okay? So all you need to know is that that is x, that is 2x. Let's say I start you with, keep it small, 4. Can you find the other sides of the triangle? Well, sure. If this one's 4, then automatically I know this one here has to be 8. Okay, now I have a right triangle. If I have two sides of the right triangle, I then do the Pythagorean theorem. Remember, this is the hypotenuse. This has to go over here. So 4 squared is 16 plus b squared equals 64. Subtract 16 from both sides. 48. Take the square root of both sides. I told you everything's mechanical. You just keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. Square root of 48, not a whole number. So we either do our factor tree or we find the biggest perfect square from that list. Biggest perfect square that goes into 48 is 16. How many times? Three times. So my side is equal to square root of 16 is 4. 4 root 3. Okay. Another problem. Let's say this is 10. I start you there with a 10. All right, well, if I start you here with a 10, then you automatically know it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. The longest side is 10, the hypotenuse is 10, then the shortest side has to be 5. And then we just jump down, do the Pythagorean theorem. 5 squared plus b squared equals the hypotenuse, which is 10 squared. 25 plus b squared. Hit pause, see if you can finish it from here. Subtract 25 from both sides. Square root both sides. Square root of 75 is not a perfect square, so I can either do my factor tree or I can look in my chart. Biggest perfect square that goes into 75 is 25. How many times? Three times. B is equal to 5 root 3. Okay, next problem. Let's say this is 4 root 3 right here. Okay, starting here, 4 root 3, 30, 60, 90. Hypotenuse has to be twice as big. So 2 times 4 root 3, all right? Remember, outside times outside. So 2 times 4 root 3 is 8 root 3. And we want to find this, we got to do the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So 4 root 3 squared plus b squared equals 8 root 3 squared. So come over here and do this. Tell me what you get for an answer. Do this one. Tell me what you get for an answer. 4 root 3 squared is going to be 48, and this is 192. So this becomes 48 plus b squared equals 192. Subtract 48 from both sides. b squared equals 144. Square root both sides. 
B is equal to 12. Let's try another problem. All right, I'm going to throw in 2 root 3. Okay, so I know that this is x and this is 2x. Okay, so we're going to do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now this one gets a little tricky, so this becomes x squared plus 2 root 3 squared equals 2x squared. Now 2x squared is 2x times 2x. Algebra 1 tells me 2x times 2x is 4x squared. That's x squared. What's 2 root 3 squared? 2 root 3 squared is 12. Now, I'm going to subtract x squared from both sides. This becomes 12. This becomes 3x squared. Divide both sides by 3. x squared equals 4. Square root both sides. x is equal to 2. So we find out that this side is 2, and this side's twice as big, so this side has to be 4. Let's try another one. Okay. I'll make this 5 root 3. I'm going to do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Every single one of these problems, we've done the Pythagorean theorem. So you have to get on board with that. 30, 60, 90, I know that this is x, and this is going to be twice as big. It's going to set up exactly the same as the last problem. x squared plus 5 root 3 squared equals 2x squared. Pause the video, see if you can finish that up. All right, here it goes. Hopefully you're checking your answers. 5 root 3 squared is going to be 75. 2x squared is 4x squared. Subtract x squared. Very mechanical. Just keep doing the same thing. 75 equals 3x squared. Divide both sides by 3. x squared equals 25. Square root of both sides. And x is equal to 5. So this side here is 5. Hypotenuse is twice as big, which would make the hypotenuse 10. Hope you found this video informative. We're going to be doing more tomorrow. And good luck with the problems.